Howdy folks, Dr. Groovy here, Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com. As you can see by the title, somebody asked me to teach the um, King of the Hill theme song. And I don't know who plays it, who did it, who, how it actually goes. I don't know, I'm just going to give it to you the way that I played it in my head. Um, because this is part of... Um, what I like to call and what everybody else has kind of been calling is just the shit that um, I used to play between, you know, songs to fill dead air at gigs. And I just kind of sounded that one out. <laughs> okay, I'm sure there are probably plenty on YouTube where you can play it the right way or whatever. Again, I don't know what band did it and I don't care. You can tell me if you want to, but again, I don't care. I remember it took me like eight years to find out about the South Park Primus thing. You know, it's like, you know, always just this gross noise. It's like, well, man, I've been sailing the seas of cheese for so long and I never knew that was Primus on here doing that. But anyway, I'm going to use, yeah, today was the day I got the, uh, as you can tell by the particular skull cap I'm wearing, uh, today's the day I got this thing, the Ibanez Musician Bass from 82. Awesome. Uh, check out the kind of goldish color. Um, my buddy, my bass player buddy on here, he, he said he actually enjoys it, turning that color. And, you know, I can see that. You know, it used to be polar white. The guitar I'm going to show you now has also kind of done that. It hadn't been around for very long. Okay, that one was in 82. This here's my Fender... Um, J C, I'm sorry, T C, <laughs> my Fender T C 90. Okay, this is all stock. It's still got the plastic on the front and back, every place that it, plastic would have been. Um, so that's your Telecaster. This is, these were made in two colors this color and um, kind of a wine, dark wine burst. You know, it's like a Almost a reddish purple into black, um, like 700 of each color made from 2004 through 2007, and um, they're Korean models. Um, yeah, and uh, then after 2007, uh, Jimmy Eats World guy um, Jim Atkins he came along and just took the guitar and just liked it the way it was, but he. Um, Gibsonized it. He just took the three-way switch from here, put it right here like a Les Paul. Everything else is the same. The same two stock Seymour Duncans that are here. And then he put four knobs down here like you'd find on a Fender amplifier over here. <laughs> and put them on. So just, uh, just set it up like a Les Paul would be wired. So then that became the, you know, from Jim Atkins, that became the JA-90 after the TC, Telecaster 90, um, ceased being, he just cleaned it at his own and put a couple extra knobs and put the toggle switch in a different place and it's still his model. So that's what I'm going to be playing. And um, just for some fun before I get to it, because I like it, to, I, I call it fun. I know you guys hurry up and get to it, this was a lesson. Yeah, you can skip ahead. Um, I'm going to destroy this guitar. <laughs> I've had a few of these. But I've just got some stuff laying around and of course I hate so many things but of course I'll be getting rid of that whole bridge and tailpiece crap. Um, start rolling things and get rid of those nasty things there and start rolling there and I'll probably end up putting like a um, Babix bridge on there or something. Um, I'm going to actually convert this one over to, oh, I got another Duncan pickup, P90, laying around, um, there you go, for anybody who, let me get myself out, it'll, so there's that one, but anyway, yeah, got to do another one, I love, I'm starting to love all these three pickup P90 Axis, so I'm gonna stick that one in the middle and have another 3P90X. That pickup and this whole mess. Um, I know some people have been asking for this. Um, 
I still haven't decided what to do with it. I really hate Duncan pickups. I just do. I've never found any that I've thought sound worth a shit, but for some reason it's okay on this guitar. There's what that pickup is. And that's the um, original bridge that came off. So that bridge and that pickup and this P90 pickup are what came stock in this. So you had that bridge with the Duncan here, then you had the P90 here, and that was it. Nothing in the middle. Then I just cut my own pick guard and put a five-way in, blah, 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 blah. So that's where those pickups came from. So anyway, um, the amplifier I'm using today is my old, not old, my 82 uh, Fender Concert uh, 2, the one that we've always seen here. Um, but what I did was I went back um, earlier this morning and put the old tubes back in it that were there when I bought it, which were all the original Fender tubes, except for the power tubes. One power tube was just missing when I bought it, and there was a great big huge wrench stuck to the big magnet on the back of the EVM12L speaker that's in there that is stock. And then the other power tube was just missing. So I uh, threw a couple of new tongue sole um, power tubes in there today, and I've just been letting them burn all day just to do that thing they do. It actually sounds better with the old um, preamp tubes, you know, the 12AX7s and the ATs and all that stuff, and the tongue sole uh, power tubes compared to the other tubes that I had in it. So I bet a lot of people are going to love, that are traditionalists, um, are going to love this sound compared to my normal junk. <laughs> but, you know, I always love my modeling stuff, but we'll see how you guys like this. Because it's just the guitar straight into the amp, and two P90s. And this. And real quick, um, just for fun, for me, <laughs> um, I was watching a couple of, uh, oh, what were they? Oh, those uh, rig rundowns. And one of them the other day was on Peter Frampton. <laughs> just funny stuff, just forever. I actually fell asleep during it a couple times. But, you know, people are funny. Um, he was sitting there, had... Um, I mean racks as tall as me with nothing but effects, another rack with nothing but effects, and then a rack that had like four or five different amplifier heads. Um, he didn't really actually use any of them, but there they were. Um, one of them he uses to power his, you know, 100 watt Marshall he uses to power a, a talk box with, um, another Marshall, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, but then he's got, um, yeah, just effects, effects, effects. Then his Bradshaw system that, you know, he had made back in the 80s or whatever on the ground out front to do those. But then there's drawers full, you know, the rack door drawers, uh, single spaces or whatever that have all these old effects in it. Then on the ground he's got a thousand effects. So he picks up his guitar all the time that he finally found, you know, that old triple pickup, Les Paul. Um, and starts playing and getting up and playing for everything. He can never sit down and talk about it. He's like, has to get up and hit all these buttons, you hear this, just him looking down and going, then it sounds like his guitar, like somebody dropped a speaker cabinet under water and then they're making it, and it's, <laughs> everything he does has to sound like that, um, I'm getting to something, and then they said, well, uh, we noticed you still use a guitar cord, well, I've never found a wireless that quite sounds like a guitar, it should, it's like, <laughs> your guitar never sounds like a guitar at all. It always sounds like, you know, somebody uh, shoving a pitchfork up a moose's ass or something, but you're worried about little discrepancies in what a wireless does. Man, some of the wirelesses are amazing these days. Actually, Line 6 makes total shit out of everything in the world except for they do make a good wireless. Um, the other one that I found interesting was uh, Brian Setzer um, when I was doing the tubes and stuff. But anyway, if you guys don't know from Stray Cats and Brian Setzer Orchestra, um, he, of course, is another cable user, and he'll use a 50 or 100 foot cable thing without using a buffer, and one of them guys will have to have our old Roland Space Echoes, and keeps buying them everywhere he goes, but they can only be this one particular one because they have this one chip in them, 
which were so uh, different from each other back then anyway. It's kind of like the uh, original Tube Screamers. Even though they had that one chip, they all were very different because, um, yeah, the variations in those. <laughs> Quality control there was just not real good, so it's hard to find. Just because one's old and it's the right time doesn't mean it's going to sound like whichever famous one you think it is, even though it is one. It, God, the... <laughs> What they were, the tolerances, is the correct word, were so off that finding the right one is just hard to get. So buying such a thing over the internet would be bad. But anyway, um, bonehead again. Setzer. Yeah, running across the stage, 100 foot guitar cord, blah, blah, blah. But he changes his tubes every night, every gig. It's like some people, you know, I you regular strings change them every set. Um... Our bass player, he would change his every set if he could afford it, but he changed his every night um, with one particular band for 12 years. But, yeah, changing his tubes, brand new tubes, Brian Setzer, every flippin' night. Pretty flippin' wild. Okay, so let's get to this thing. How long have I been yakking? Uh, uh, long enough. Okay, so let's get to uh, the sound of this guitar and show you how I do the King of the Hill thing. And again... If you want to learn it right, go learn it by from somebody who actually uh, studied it. Because I didn't. Somebody asked how I did it. Hey, can you show me the King of the Hill? Well, you're going to get my version. <laughs> Again, if it's way off, let it be off. Don't be yelling at me. Say, I didn't say beat off. I said let it be off. <laughs> um, if you, Again, this is the way I play it, just to get me by. Um, so here's the guitar. <laughs> That's both pickups, everything dimed, um, clean channel. And I've got the other channel set up uh, for just a bit of overdrive, not much of any. <laughs> tribute to all those guys. I'm going to use this big long chord here, of course from South Creek Audio. It's all, it's all mommy will let me use. So anyway, I'll just leave both pickups on and that's what we'll do. Uh, so the amp's way back there somewhere and now I'm up here finally. Okay, get this, it keeps turning upside down and oh I forgot, I can bring it down so you guys can see what the hell's going on. That's what I meant to do. <laughs> Alright, actually hook it back in here. Am I still recording? Yes, it is. Oddly enough. Okay, I think we're down low enough. And now you can see everything. Ah, oh, too low. That was my small package. <laughs> we don't need that. Okay, let's put this on the guitar instead of everything else. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are in the key of E. I am anyway, it seemed to be about right. Okay, so I came up with basically that. E. That's what I came up with, my pinky actually going up to the fourth fret on E. So you can either do it this way. Dun, 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 dun. So like shaving a haircut. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so the fourth fret, then back off. Going to the A. Up to four and back to two on the A string. So you got. 
in as much of the chord as you want to open it up. If you want to really open it up, play an E chord. But it sounds like however you want to do it, but those are the notes you actually will fret if you do it my way. I did it Groovy's way. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, next one, same thing on the bottom one. Okay, going from the A. Now E, four. And two. Then we have hammer on, pull off from four, two, I'm sorry, two, four, two. Okay, so, so I got this. Okay, so then back to, again, so nothing new. Then from that, we do the, so, I'm sorry. I do that every time and it drives me nuts. That open D thing, and it's not there, of course. Um, so, go up to the D string, it's supposed to be, okay, which is D string, second fret. And don't hit the open D, I do it every flip of time, I swear I do. Now, A, just the same notes we've done before. Four, two, open. Then on the E string, same crap. Uh, four, two, and open. So you got the run down going. But you'll want to. No. <laughs> okay. So from the beginning. There's a long version and a short version, so whichever you want to do. If you want to do the one straight off TV, then it is just going to C sharp minor, and you're doing the upstrokes and on the skip beats. Four times. Okay, C sharp minor. With a click between each one. Then G sharp minor. Then A. And now, if you're actually going to do the run down, okay, the one you do down from A, oh, or, I'm sorry, B on down, okay, so that's what you'd have, you have this. Okay, that, sorry I missed a note, but that's what I do. <laughs> okay, so again. kind of where you get on the TV show. Um, there is a, sometimes a little longer version at the end, and that's where you'll, they'll actually stick in um, a D chord here, okay, and then another A. That's where they'll be going um, after the, let's see, like this. They're going to stick in a D chord and an A chord. Again, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, D, A, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, from B down. And they do that a lot whenever they're coming down off of A or B. Do that um, quick trill there, 
hammer on pull off. Okay. And that's what you basically have going is that. <laughs> okay. Um, I never did bother to learn any of the lead stuff because it's just me over there playing. So go grab it from some other dude. Um, I did, every now and then if a bass player did pick up on something, which is, you know, never does. <laughs> Poor bass players. Um, <laughs> you know, I play bass just as much as anybody, but, you know, when if you're playing guitar and you have a bass player in the band, uh, unless you're Paul, uh, Paul's my friend who, um, he, he's very cool. Uh, he enjoys us a lot too, he enjoys the color. Uh, very, very brilliant guy. Don't anybody ever give him shit. He's about as smart as they get. Um, you'll see Paul on anything I've done. And if he comments, he's telling you the truth. Okay. Um, but, I don't know where I was going with all that, but hey, Paul. <laughs> um, anyway, if I had Paul in the band, he would cover it. And I, uh, I know there's a lead part that just does these unison things. Remember Oh Sherry? <coughs> By... Steve Perry, <laughs> when he went solo. Oh, Sherry, I love oh, no. There was like, um, it's like, okay, okay. So this here does kind of the same thing, but it does it at, uh, it sounds to me like anyway, uh, fourth fret on the E string. Then the seventh on the B. Okay, so you're gonna get that, and that sounds right to me. So it must be. Um, but that's the only part I ever bothered to kind of throw in there. Um, again, four on the E, seven on the B, and you just bend the seven up a whole step, meaning two frets. So seventh up to the ninth. So you got. Then you go to 7 and 10. Okay, bend it up to unison. And then um, 9 and 12. Then 12 and 15. Okay, so you got. Then. Then you'll finally definitely do a real E chord and strum up. Okay? Because <laughs> you hear that. Okay? So that's basically it. Um, all the parts are there. Um, the lead parts are not there. I'm 90% sure that most of this is probably really close to correct. Again, I have just simply sounded it out on stage and never listen to it again. I just hear it every now and then. Um, I do know at the end of Cops, it only goes like this. <laughs> That's it. You know, none of the bad boys, bad boys. Um, just an E, ha hammer on that <laughs> first fret on the G. Make that E7 out of it. That's all it does. Um, anyway, back on track. <laughs> so, that's all I've got from it. So, um, if I was to play it kind of slow and do it the short version TV thing, I would do it like this. Okay, I'm going to play it slow and leave out the lead part because you know where it goes if you're asking for this. Um, so, it's like... <laughs> back to you know so back to it again if you're doing the long part um, version of this all of that is the same except for you will go up to the during that part okay 
you just go up to D bar chord mm -hmm. and A bar chord after you get done with the A. So C sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, then D for half a measure, A for half a measure, then right back into it. So again, that gives you... Again with the triplet thing there. Okay, so that basically is it. And again, don't forget, just at the end, never do that open D string. Again. Okay. okay. Dun, 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 dun. Somebody asked me just today, hey, can you teach Green Acres? Um, I already did. <laughs> so go back to one of these other ones. It was just a few days ago. Uh, you'll catch it on there. I taught a whole bunch of stuff. And it'll actually say um, dead air or something in the middle of the title. You'll see it's a lot longer video, and I taught a bunch of little stupid things in there. Okay, so you learn a lot about this groovy, groovy guitar, uh, the, once again, from 2007 through 2011. Um, sorry, 2004 through 2000. Yeah, 2004 through 2007 is when they made these again. This is the TC Telecaster 90, again, before Jim Adkins got a hold of it and changed the things and made it his... JA90. Um, and again, I'm going to throw that third pickup in the middle and then change a few things around. And like I said, again, I don't know what I'm going to do with this Callaham equipped Fender bridge that was actually on that Flying V Tele originally. Somebody said, No, fill it to me. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't imagine ever using it. If anybody wants it and actually wants to shoot me a price for that pickup, with that bridge, everything's compensated, everything is like I just took it off the guitar brand flipping new. Um, so if that's a that's a model number of anything you would want, um, there it is. Just drop it right in your telly and you're good to go. It will not go through the top, I mean through the back. So it's a through the body only. You got six holes of course to go down there and four to mount it with nothing else under there so if anybody wants to give me a fair price for this um let me know again i just honestly can't imagine using this because it's just not my thing and again i just hate everything to do with seymour duncan so once again there's your model number and everything that i care about that's about how much i care okay and then the little story is about frampton's weird wireless fetish that he won't do and then <laughs> uh, God then the other dude changing tubes every single day that's wild but hey um, you guys let me know what you think of uh, again it's not being mic'd you're getting the camera mic thing but let me know if anybody enjoys this P90 thing through that fender amp or not with the old tubes in it on all the preamp sections and for the uh, effects and um even the uh, reverb is tube operated there, so there's not any kind of uh, trickery going on. Again, the guitar is dimed. It's just on the B channel. First time Fender had a B channel that you could switch. Okay. <laughs> female as my birthright <laughs> or namesake I was going to name her China China Beach Grove I lived and was born in a town called Beach Grove Indiana and then China Beach came out so I was going to name her China China Grove after <laughs> The neck, here's the bridge. And back to clean, back to good. 
in the middle. And of course, since I haven't set it up, um, the intonation's off. So that's probably from the factory. But. And those, of course, are not elixirs. And somebody did this stupid. I hate it when people send me guitars like this. Um, is that my shang it right? The low E string, the way it's put on her, tying it on and running it under there. Oh, good lord, I get sick of people who do that, makes it a bitch to get off. Or they run it through there again, through the hole. Oh, mercy, people quit it. Okay, so again, anybody want that bridge with the Duncan in it, let me know. And again, hell, I'll just run through the thing. I know how much time is on here, and I love to just talk. I have nothing else to do for three minutes, and that's about how much time this will let me do it. Um, I'm going to go to the bridge pickup, play this song one more time. Again, um, follow along, and if you want to learn any more of it, go learn it from somebody else that actually has torn it apart and looked at it, okay? And, uh, that's it. That's what I do. Remember, I'm ugly. I can't play with this shit. I don't write songs with the crap. And, and we do this. Okay, never mind. Anyway, dudes <laughs> and dudettes. I know there's some dudettes out there. Uh, you guys be groovy because I am Dr. Groovy. I am the lord of the wasteland. A modern day man of steel. I gather darkness to please me, and I command you to kneel before the God of Thunder and Rock and Roll. Well, that's back when he was playing uh, the Gibson Grabber. And who was it? Dent. He was playing one too from the old Green Day. Dent was playing the G3. Da, 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 da. Gene was playing the regular maroon colored grabber. But anyway, there's as much a king of the hill as I know and as much energy as I want to put into it. So, yeah, just hope you enjoy it, whoever asked for it. Uh, speak up, whoever asked for it, because I, I forget every single two seconds. So, I might record this again tomorrow because I forgot that I did it today. <laughs> okay, anyway, herpy trails and catch you soon. Um, hey, I don't know if I can actually put this on here. I'll see. Um, I did Beverly Hillbillies yesterday for somebody, but there was an old version of people would sing, um, Come on, listen to my story about a man named Jed. Took Ellie Mae and he threw her in the bed. Uh, out from the zipper came a wiggling worm, and out from the worm come a bubbling sperm. The next thing you know, old Jed's eating hair. Ken folks said, Jed, pull it out of there. They said, Granny's the one that you ought to screw. So he backed off and jacked off and fucked Granny too. Uh, that's all I know. You guys be groovy. Bye. <laughs>